Hello, welcome back to the spider's web. And as you can see, I'm busy at the moment with my skeleton troop. Or my skeleton regiment. Um, I'm uh, painting away quite merrily. I've got these are the, I'm doing them in blocks of um, a certain amount. And uh, these are the first ones I've nearly almost completed. There are still a few areas that I need to do. <coughs> but I just wanted to show you these before we started off on the um or before we carried on with the revenant. Here's the um banner standard bearer. Um that's what I've chosen for him. One banner. Um now unlike the first one where I thought actually that part was a cape which if you notice I put on the back of the squad leader um, I found out it was actually for a banner or people using it as a banner so I decided to use that as the banner and I've used one of the um, skeleton bodies which would normally find actually put onto one of the bases so as though it's coming out on top so make it look a little bit different let's put it that way so I've got all those done. So far I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 here um, in the process of, I wouldn't say near completion but closer completion and I've got a few others as well. I've also got the little rat doggy type things. I've got four of those um, so they'll be added as well but that's what I've been working on off camera. What I'm working on on camera, as you may remember, is this fella. So what have we done with this? Well, as you know, we've oops, we've done the pink on the um, on the muscle areas and this, everything. Uh, the screaming skull on the um, on the bone areas. Uh, done these metal and rusted. <coughs> All we need now is to finish off. We need to rust up the fellow's armour, highlight the um, lance, and paint the shield. So it's not going to take too long, but that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So uh, let's get on with it, shall we? Okay, so let's get cracking then, shall we? And what we're going to be starting off doing, I've just noticed a few little bits of the grey primer that's coming through the um, shaft of the thing, but it doesn't make any difference because we're going to be disguising that. And the way we're going to be doing that is by getting the dryad bark, which we use to paint the um, paint the shaft. A little bit of that on our palette. And we're going to mix that in with not was that red, I picked the wrong one up. <coughs> Evil Sun Scarlets, which you've seen me use before on this model. Um, and we mix those together to give it a slightly lighter look to it. See if I can shake it up a little to get a bit more paint on the on the go here. Now we don't want it too red. We want it more of a browny red. I've got a bit too much red in there to be honest. So let's have a touch more brown here. 
I want to make it if you remember the older paint colour of um, oh, what was it called? Oh heck! I can't remember. I don't think I have any left of it. Um, it was a good red for going down. It was with the base. It was like a base coat. I can't remember what it was called. Never mind. But we don't. We don't want much of this anyway. And for this, we're doing. Just that. That's all. That's all we're doing. Just that. Over the top. It just breaks it up. That's all. Nothing more. Finished. Good pulled. That's it. Done. Next what we're going to be doing is the little bit of a ribbon that's on the top of the um, <coughs> Actually, I think. Can you hear the red in the? No, you can't. So what we'll do is, I'll show you how I thin my paints. So what I will do is, I will get my syringe, get some water in it, and add a few drops. One, two, three, four, five drops. So far, put the lid on. And shake. That's sounding a little bit more likely, or more like it's rather. Let's have a look at the. That looks a lot better. Okay, so I don't need that anymore. That's how it's done. Very simple technique. <laughs> And I want to get a small amount on the brush. I want to see where the, the raised areas are. And it's just the raised areas we're using on, or covering with this, not using on. The raised areas we are covering with this red colour. Like so. And I've just realised I've only just painted part of the shaft and I'm holding the shaft while I spin it round. What an idiot. Don't do this. Whatever you do, don't do this at all. But there you go. Actually, it's not too bad. It's, it's dried enough for me to get away with doing that. I'm lucky, sometimes it won't, so as it's not the kind of thing you want to do. Don't make a habit of it. It's just a happy accident now that uh, it didn't rub off. What I do need to do, however, is clean my brush slightly and a little bit of the dryad back and just touch were just touch on the on the shaft just there uh, where I've got a little bit of red which I don't need uh -huh. in fact I haven't done this side of it so I'm gonna just go over So as well, making sure I've got all the grey hidden, like so. There we are. And that's the shaft taken care of. Now what we're going to be doing for the time being is the rust areas. Or the base colouring of the rust areas. You saw me do this on the horses. We're using for this step the typhus corrosion. If you remember that, it's the very water one that looks like a wash with bits in. 
Okay, so we're going over all the armor areas. So anywhere where you've actually missed a little bit with the paint, you can disguise with this. Uh, not a problem. But don't do it everywhere like you did on the horse. You just want to pick out certain areas to do this with because there's not a lot of armor here. And you want to make it look as though it's metal and not orange. So that's the that's the way, or well, that's the reason I'm saying about uh, only doing a small amount on the fella. Um, bit of a case of less is more in the case of the, the man's armour. And lad, you can hear something outside. One of the neighbours has got music on a little bit loud. I'm just hoping it's not going to come out on me because I don't want to be keep having to uh, contest copyright claims because somebody's got the music on loud outside. Oh dear. Okay, so that's <coughs> that's what we're going to be doing for the. Um, Oh, for the chappy. Now, it's a case of doing the um, armor. And how we do that is simple. We get three colors. We get Abaddon Black. We get Xerius Purple. And we get Gene Stealer Purple. There we go. Now, we start off with in the middle of the shield, we start off with the Xerius purple. It's a mid tone colour. And we want that quite watery. And we do as I say, in the middle of the shield We want this going. It doesn't matter how you know there's no hard and fast rule of where to start and stop, but towards the middle of the shield is where you want it to go. While that is still wet, okay, we want to very quickly get into the black, Abaddon black, and that is going to go on the bottom of the Of the shield and I'm wiped a little bit off now because I want it to go up and I want this purple to come down into it like so Okay, so I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to get some more Xerius purple. This time I'm not going to water it down. I'm just going to use it neat, as it were. And I'm going to just brush down, straight down like so. And keep feathering out the area where the black and the purple meat. In fact I'm going to get the black open and the Gene Stealer purple open as well. It's a little bit of the black running along the bottom upwards. And we'll bring down the purple again. Trying to keep it blended 
like so but want to keep the tip the very tip almost black and then we're going to clean that off I'll clean the brush off rather and get the jean steel purple out which is a lighter one and we're going to use this at the top of the shield now this is going to be disguised quite a bit with the um, what should we call it with the Zarius purple but I'm going to put it on and bring it down to meet the Zarius purple and while the jean steel or purple is still wet we're going to be pulling the Zerius purple up into that and now from the top That's the kind of thing we're looking at. And I'm hoping you can see the differences in shades here. Because it isn't showing up so well on my screen unfortunately but there is the um, there is a very distinct difference in shades from the oops when you look at it in the flesh so to speak And it's just a case of touching up here and there, making sure the blend isn't too um, noticeable where the join is in between the diff two different colours. Down here where the black is, um, I need to do a little bit more work because it does look as though oh, there is a distinct, very distinct join between the black and the purple and I do keep wiping off my brush and a piece of uh, kitchen towel here As I, said, I don't want it to look I don't want it uh, drying on my brush Shot the brush again. It does take a little bit of time and a little bit of practice to do this, unfortunately. Um, oops, it's not something that uh, is a very straightforward thing to uh, to get right at the first time you do it. And as you can see. Even after doing it a few times, I'm still struggling in certain parts to to get it right. Sometimes it will work, not a problem. Other times you have to work at it to get it done right. But that's looking pretty good, though, don't you think? <coughs> okay, so now that's done, we're going to be concentrating now on the rust effects on the armour 
and again for that we're going to be using riser rust which you saw for the rust effect we did on the horse exactly the same technique I'm doing the same technique on all of my undead army so riser rust if you remember it's that really thick dry paint and that's the colour of how it looks in the tub pot whatever you want to call it and we'll get some of this on our brush dump it on our palette and again I'm going to get my dry brush out because this brush is a little too I mean it's not perfectly pointed for painting but for this effect it's a bit too pointed whereas the dry brush it is a flattish brush and we just again a small amount of paint on the brush and we dry brush over like so the same on there I haven't done the base of it because I don't see the point I don't want to, as I said I don't want it going everywhere oh yeah and that will do that will do us that's all we need for that just to give us that look of rust in fact I've just seen a little bit there that I've not done oh yeah. and that's our chap finished now all that remains to do is put the base in the paste I'll put the basing material on it which I'm going to do in a couple of minutes um, oh my god I've not got this out so I'm going to have to nip off and go and dig it out but uh, I don't think there's anything else I need there is something I need to just touch up on um, I'm going to do that with if I can find it it's not no stone uh, iron breaker <coughs> that colour we're going to just I say just a little touch up in one part and it's here just on the join between the um there we are that's it that's all we're doing oh the stirrups as well I forgot about and we're going to do that in this colour as well and it's just simply a case of just paint it on like so don't really need to do much on the inside of it because we're not going to see it but um, I should have done that before I glued it on a little awkward to get in there no but still you can if you want just put a few little dabs here and there in some of the rusted areas just to show that it is metal like that there we are. Now I'm just going to step away and pick up the and get the basic material and then I can show you what I'm doing with that um, and then I'm going to have to let it dry glue it down onto the um, onto the space left here so this is where he fits in just there um, then this base was going to be trimmed down and it's going to be mounted on top of uh, another base which is going to have the um, the secret weapon the uh, coffee stirrer sticks 
around it, make the base nice. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go and come back uh, in a second and um, show you how I apply the basing material. Okay, I'm back. So let's have a bit of a a change around here, shall we? I'll get rid of this disc. I'll take that off. I'll get rid of our regiment and we'll pull this back into the middle. Now what we're going to be doing is using a scraggy old brush we're going to be applying dark earth medium from Vallejo. Um, it's, a, it's a textured thick paste and we need to apply it quite thickly but it needs to go on thickly but we apply it first of all in stages so we don't apply it don't give it a thick coat we just give it a, a few small coats is always the best way of doing it um, try and build it up to a slope and leading up to the edge of that um, oh, of the actual base of the model um, I like to push it into that rather than move it across. Um, I spread it out and then I push, push it in because it gives it that um, really nice effect of it sloping down a little. And once we've done this, it will be reapplied when it's glued down. And it's just a case just tap it on don't you don't want to smooth it on you, you're tapping it you're dabbing it stippling whatever you want to call it just like so and again I'm pushing it into the edge between the the flat piece of plastic that it's sat on and the uh, the model's base. So I will spread it out a little there, and then I'll start doing the texturing. Once I've seen how much coverage we have, there we go. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll leave that now until it's dried, and um, put a little bit on the actual base itself because a few flat areas which we don't want um Once this is all dried, we won't paint it. Um, but as I said, we need to come back a few times to build up the height of this. Because once it blending in with the um, once it's sloping down to the edges, shall we say? Um, and then once we've done that. Uh, once all that's complete then it gets painted it will get glued down and then we'll give another going over all the way over the bases to hide the the joins to hide the little lines in between but <coughs> when it comes down to that stage I'll come back and show you but it's going to take a few more times it's going to take a while for this to dry and then another coat and possibly another coat and uh, and then once that's uh, so once that's dried, painted. Once the paint's dried, it gets glued down on here. And then we'll go over all of this area again um, to hide the like the lines in between the bases to make it look as though it's all on one base.
In fact, I'm just noticing something. We're going to have to do some more bits on some of these anyway because I forgot to. Uh, like here where we've got stones there, I forgot to ultra extreme highlight those stones, those big rocks. So uh, we do have a little bit to do on these as well, so that's not a problem. We can do that again. Um, but as it stands, that's all I can do now. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the videos. Um, I, we shall be back to finish off when uh, it's all ready to do so. Okay, so until next time, as always, take care, God bless, and bye for now.